Welcome to a screencast on an introduction to emission spectra. Here are a bunch of chemistry students wearing what are known as diffraction grading glasses. And these are glasses that have a small piece of plastic for the lens. It has some very finely etched lines, parallel lines on it. And the point is that this diffraction grading functions essentially as a prism. And if we wear diffraction grading glasses, or for that matter use a prism, and observe spectra of different light sources, then we can see the prism or the diffraction grading uh, separate the light into the white light, uh, or whatever color light it is, into its, uh, into its spectral components. So what we can do is use an incandescent or fluorescent bulb and look at that and what we see is a reasonably continuous spectrum. But if we look at a tube filled with gas that's energized in what's known as a discharge tube, and this is hydrogen, and there's helium, and neon, and mercury, so those are four different gases that we could uh, try observing the spectra of, and notice they have different colors, so they give different what are known as discrete spectra. Uh, this is the spectrum of mercury, and notice, unlike the continuous spectrum where we have all the colors of the rainbow, purple, sort of smears into blue, into green, into yellow, into orange, into red, here we have only a few specific lines of purple and blue and yellow and orange and red, but lots of places where there's no light at all at that particular uh, wavelength or frequency or energy of light in the spectrum. Now in general, hot objects, so the sun, a glowing piece of metal, incandescent bulb, uh, they emit electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic en energy of all wavelengths and produce what's called a continuous spectrum. And what we typically do to be able to see the spectrum well is we have our source of light. We make a fine beam of that light by passing it through a slit, a narrow opening, and then that light we pass through a prism or diffraction grating and we get our spectrum, and in this case a continuous spectrum. But if instead we use a metal salt, so sodium chloride or uh, potassium chloride or some sort of a salt containing a ionic compound containing a metal, and sprinkle that into a Bunsen burner flame, we see some pretty colors being produced. And then if we look at the spectrum, we get a discrete spectrum. And we get the same thing if we use a gas discharge tube. In this case, it's a hydrogen gas. Uh, and we pass a beam of light through a slit to, to make it kind of a narrow beam, pass it through a prism, and we get a discrete spectrum. In this case, this is the spectrum of hydrogen. And we only see a red line, a blue-green line, and a couple of purple lines. And that's all we see uh, for the spectrum from, in this case, hydrogen. Just as a kind of note, here are some of the flame colors that you get when you take a, a metal salt and put it in a flame and energize it to look at its spectrum, perhaps. Uh, lithium, strontium, uh, sodium, copper, and potassium salts from left to right. Uh, and these are not the pure elements. They're lithium chloride, strontium chloride, etc., ionic compound salts. And uh, when we energize them in a Bunsen burner flame, they give off these pretty colors. And in fact, that's what happens in fireworks, is the different colors of the fireworks are often due to uh, metal salts that are uh, energized, they're burned essentially, and they produce these uh, different uh, colors that we enjoy watching. These are some gases in discharge tubes, and the same basic idea applies. Uh, each gas has a different color and uh, that it appears and a different spectrum. And from left to right, hydrogen. Uh, deuterium is D2, which is an isotope of hydrogen. Helium, oxygen, neon, nitrogen, and mercury. And these are gases that produce uh, discrete spectra when they're energized in a discharge tube. Now, here's a big question. 
why does an atom only give off specific energy or specifically specific color or wavelength or frequency photons in these cases for the metal salts and for the uh, gases? And that was a big question um, in the past, about 100 years ago, when, di uh, when discrete spectra were first discovered. And it turns out, to make a long story short, that the reason we have discrete spectra and only specific color photons from energized substances, atoms uh, of an element, is because electrons and atoms can only exist in very specific, discrete, what we call quantized energy levels. And this might be familiar to you if we, uh, this is the nucleus of an atom, and we have, often we describe this in very simplistic terms as showing circles around the nucleus, and they correspond to a first energy level, or shell we often call it, that the electron can exist in, or a second energy level or shell that the electrons can exist in, or a third energy level, and then of course a fourth, and, and uh, we can keep on going. And the electrons can exist in these specific levels, but they can't be anywhere. They can't be in, let's say, the two and a half level. There is no such thing. Now, an electron in an atom in a lower energy level can absorb a very specific amount of energy and doing so, move up to a higher energy level. So the electron that was normally in the first energy level might absorb some energy and go to the second energy level. Or it might absorb more energy and go to the third energy level. Now when an electron is in an energy level that it doesn't normally occupy, it's not stable there and it goes down to a lower energy level spontaneously. And when it does that, it emits energy in the form of a photon of a very specific wavelength or frequency or color. And in this case, we had an electron that was in maybe the third energy level. When it goes down to the second energy level, it emits a photon of red light. It could, another electron could go from the third energy level maybe to the first energy level, and that's a different energy difference in that transition and it would uh, emit a photon of, let's say, purple light, a different energy, different, uh, different wavelength, different frequency, but very specific to that substance. Now, in any atom, and each electron transition from a higher energy level to a lower energy level gives off a photon of a very specific energy or a very specific color, wavelength, frequency uh, to be emitted. And as an example, maybe the 2 to 1 transition emits photons of red light. And maybe the 3 to 1 transition emits photons of green light. And the 4 to 1 transition emits photons of blue light. And then, of course, there's also 3 to 2 and 4 to 2 and 4 to 3. And then there's energy levels beyond 4. And all of those transitions are possible and those transitions producing photons of specific energies, specific frequencies, specific wavelengths, specific colors, uh, corresponds to the spectrum of that substance. And each element has unique energies for these quantized levels, these energy levels for the electrons. Therefore, they give off a unique emission spectrum. Uh, this is light being emitted by the energized atom. And it's a specific pattern of photons uh, that's unique to that element. So for example, hydrogen in a gas discharge tube gives off a spectrum that the visible portion at least looks like this. There's red light of 650 nanometer wavelength. There's blue green or aqua colored light of 486 uh, nanometer wavelength. There's purple light of 434 nanometer wavelength and purple light of 410 nanometer wavelength. And those are the only four colors that you see in the visible part of the hydrogen spectrum. Now the emission spectrum of each element being unique means that that's kind of a chemical fingerprint. So if we look at the emission spectra of different substances, we see they're all characteristically uh, discrete. They all have specific 
uh, colored lines, but no two elements have the completely same pattern. And so these are uh, the spectra of visible spectra of sodium, hydrogen, calcium, and mercury respectively. And if we have a substance that we don't know what it contains and we energize it and we find, let's say, this pattern of discrete spectral lines, then we'd know it contained calcium. And similarly for the other elements. Here are a larger number of spectra, of unique spectra for a bunch of different elements. And again, you can see they're all discrete, but they are all different. And so they are unique and identify, identifying for substances, for elements. And that's the introduction to emission spectra.